Shalom, family, most high in Christ. Bless. I'm Officer Zara to my right. Soldier Yashon. All praise. So the name of this class is Providing and Dealings. Providing and Dealings. IT, if you could please uh, pull up that, first, that definition, dealing. That definition, dealing. Name of this class is Providing and Dealing. All right. So if you could read that for me, soldier. Dealing. Now. Uh, verse, I mean, uh, number one. Number one. Method of business, manner of conduct. Okay, can you go to synonyms for me, please? So it has commerce, interaction. All right, so dealing is pretty much when you're buying and selling. All right, dealing with just commerce, business. All right, so we're going to pretty much go into providing and dealings and go into that dealing with the laws. All right. A lot of us, you know, we always say that we have to keep God's commandments. And a lot of us, we always want to hear prophecies, but we really never go over the laws that's in the, uh, Genesis, Deuteronomy, and, and et cetera. All right? So let's go ahead and open up with Matthew chapter 22, verse 36. Matthew chapter 22, verse 36. The book of Matthew chapter 22, verse 36. Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. So that's the first and the greatest commandment. Let's, let's look at the next one. Read. Verse 39. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Mm. Read. On these two Commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So on these two, it summarizes all the law. Once you once you, you got all the law down, if you be able to do these two. So all right, so go to uh, Sirach chapter 25, verse 1. Sirach chapter 25, verse 1. The book of Sirach, chapter 25, verse 1. In these three things I was beautified and stood up beautiful both before God and men. The unity of brethren. So these three things stand up beautiful, beautiful, both before God and men. These three things. Read. The unity, the un of, read. The unity of brethren. Uh-huh. The love of neighbors. A man and a wife that agree together. The love of neighbors and a man and a wife that agree together. So look, we're going to go into the love of neighbors. Go to Leviticus chapter 25, verse 35. Yes, sir. The love of neighbors. Let's see if we actually truly love our neighbors. We always say, you know, we already know that actions are way. That's how you show God that you love him by keeping his commandments. You know, all that talk, that blah, blah, blah. The most high God ain't looking at that. So, look, it's the same thing. When you deal with your brother, you're going to have to show some kind of action. Right. So let's go to Leviticus chapter 25, verse 35. The book of Leviticus chapter 25, verse 35. And if thy brother be waxen poor. And fallen in decay with thee, then thou shalt relieve him. Yea, though he be a stranger or a sojourner, that he may live with thee. All right, read that again. Leviticus 25, verse 35. Mm -hmm. And if thy brother be waxen poor and fallen in decay with thee. So if your brother, your neighbor just ends up being poor, you know, something just happened to him to where they're they not able to take care of themselves or they lose their job or anything like that, you know. Already, you already know that when in captivity, different things arise, tribulations, things like that. So you already know that sometimes people are going to fall on a short time. So look, this is what the commandments say right here. Read it again. And if thy brother be waxing poor and fallen in decay with thee, then thou shalt relieve him. Thou shalt what? Relieve him. Uh-huh. Yea, though he be a stranger. You should relieve him. Help your brother. Help your sister if he fallen into decay, if he poor. That's what you're supposed to do. That's the second greatest commandment. Help your brother. You're your sister. Go to uh, Psalms chapter 82, verse 3. So look, man, a lot of us, we, hey, we have to work on this. You know, it's all for us to get better and grow together as a unity, as, an, as a, uh, a congregation, as a family. Psalms chapter 82, verse 3. Read. The book of Psalms chapter 82, verse 3. Defend the poor and fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. Defend the poor and the fatherless. It don't say be offensive to the poor and the fatherless. It says right. defend them. 
You're supposed to be there for them. Whatever they're going through, make sure you're there for, for them, whether it be financially, spiritually, anything. You make sure you be there for them according to God's laws. Give them the scriptures. Help them out. That's what you're supposed to do. Defend them. Read, read that again. Defend the poor and fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. Mm-hmm. Deliver the poor and needy. Deliver the poor and needy. Needy. Ooh. What are you supposed to deliver the poor and needy out of? What are you supposed to deliver them out of? Read. Read them out of the hand of the wicked. Hey, and this is a lot of times, I know sometimes we all fall short that we don't want to help our brothers or sisters, but we're supposed to help them. It says, deliver the poor and needy and read them, rid them out of the hand of the wicked. If you see a brother and sister, they need help with money financially, you're supposed to help them. But if you don't, that's when they want to uh, probably have to steal, go ahead and steal food or money so they'll be able to survive. So look, it says, rid them out of the hand of the wicked. Prevent them from maybe being able to do that. That's what we're supposed to do. We we supposed to be that line of defense to help our brothers and sisters out. Go to Matthew chapter twenty six verse eleven. Matthew chapter twenty six verse eleven. Remember the name of the class is providing and dealings. The book of Matthew chapter twenty six verse eleven. For ye have the poor always with you. So we already understand that when Christ told us this, even till now, we always gonna have the poor with us. We always going to have somebody that's in need of food, clothes, or a house to cover shame, things like that. We always going to have people like that around us when they come in the body. Read. Read that again. For ye have the poor always with you, but me ye have not always. All praise. Go to Psalms chapter 112, verse 9. Psalms chapter 112, verse 9. The book of Psalms, chapter 112, verse 9. He had dispersed. He had given to the poor. His righteousness endured forever. His horn shall be exalted with honor. So this person, a righteous person, read that uh, the top part again. He had dispersed. This is what a righteous person is going to do. They're going to disperse what everything that they have. They're going to understand that when they work in a job and they have a little extra over, you know, that pay, they're going to understand that. This is going to be able to help the body out to where we'll be able to grow, help the people that's in need, wherever they need food, things like that. This is what the, the Most High God is. The Most High God is telling us how to be righteous and how to be able to help our brother and show love according to uh, the second greatest commandment. Right? Read that again for me. He had dispersed. He had given to the poor. His righteousness endured forever. His horn shall be exalted with honor. Ooh, this person is going to be exalted with under, especially when the mm. kingdom of God come. This person is going to be exalted for doing these things. Go to Leviticus chapter 19, verse 9. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 9. So Oops. understand, y'all, make sure we read these uh, laws, these commandments, all right? Let's make sure that we're going over them, understanding them, asking questions about these laws so we we understand that. This is how you make it to the kingdom of heaven. Ask. If you need, if you need help trying to uh, deal with your brother, ask. Ask questions. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 9. The book of Leviticus chapter 19, verse 9. And when ye reap the harvest of your land. So this is talking about when you have a garden. So I already know that we have a gardening club here in IOC, Arkansas. So let's let's get into some what was this talking about? Read it again. And when ye reap the harvest of your land. So when you have a harvest, you gather all the fruits and vegetables, whatever you have, the herbs in your in your garden. Read. Thou shalt not wholly reap the corners of thy field. Uh huh. Neither shalt thou gather the gleanings of thy harvest. You're not supposed to gather everything in the garden. Read. And thou shalt not glean thine vineyard. Neither shall thou gather every grape of thy vineyard. Why are we not supposed to gather every grape of the vineyard? Read. Thou shalt leave them for the poor and stranger. Leave it for the poor and a stranger. Leave it for the poor and a stranger. Whatever, guard, all the guardian, if you planted some, leave some of it for the people that's around you, your neighbors, the ones that's keeping the commandments, the people of your nation. Leave that for them so they'll be able to peop- for provide for the people that's in need, that's in hunger. Go to uh, Deuteronomy chapter 24, verse 19. Deuteronomy chapter 24, verse 19. The 
The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 24, verse 19. When thou cuttest down thine harvest in thy field, and hast got a sheaf in the field, thou shalt not go again to fetch it. So when you're gathering, you just forget, like, uh, just say, let's say if we, I'm gathering grapes in my garden, right? And I'll uh, accidentally forget about one row of grapes. I'm like, damn, I got to go back and go get them grapes. Right. You know, birds <laughs> might eat them or something right. like that. Like, come on now. But hey, let's look what the scripture say. Read it again. When, when thou cuttest down thine harvest in thy field, and hast forgot a sheaf in the field, thou shalt not go again to fetch it. Don't go back and fetch it, but what? Read. It shall be for the stranger, uh -huh. for the fatherless, uh -huh. and for the widow. Ooh, read. That the Lord thy God may bless thee in all the work of thine hands. So what? The Most High God is teaching us how to be able to just provide for the, the, the people that's among us. It's it's obviously a reason why you end up forgetting it in the first place. <laughs> uh, people might need help, right? Right, right? So go to Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 24. Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 24. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 24. When thou comest into thy neighbor's vineyard. So if, if, if you have a garden, right? Right. And I come into your garden, right? Read. Let's, let's see. Let's see. Read, read, read. When thou, when thou comest into thy neighbor's vineyard. I'm going to go in your garden, right? Read. Then thou mayest eat grapes, thy fill at thine own pleasure. Ooh-wee. So if I want to, if I, if, <laughs> hey, hey, wait, 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 wait. I know burning fat and all that, right? But if, uh, if I'm poor, grapes, right? Though. Right, right. If I'm poor and I'm hungry and I need some help, right? right. I can go to my neighbor's vineyard and get the herbs and grapes or whatever I need to what? Thy feel at thy own pleasure. Mm -hmm. mm. Yes, sir. Mm -mm. Read. But thou shalt not put any in thy vessel. But you can't put it in any vessel to take it for later on. Mm. I'm just I'm gonna eat, you know, get filled up, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna just put some in my pocket. <laughs> right. Nah, you can't do that. Nah, uh, uh, none of that. Go to Luke chapter three, verse eleven. But look, that's what the law say. I can go into my neighbor's vineyard and do that. Now, some of us, we probably thinking uh, worldly, like, hell yeah, nah, I wish a nigga would come up in my uh, garden and try to take some of my stuff, right? Right. Nah, let's see what the scriptures say. Luke chapter 3, verse 11. The book of Luke chapter 3, verse 11. Mm -hmm. He answered it and said unto them, he that had two coats, let him impart to him that had none. And he that had meat, let him do likewise. So it says, he that have two coats, let him impart to him that have none. Now, I know a lot of us, we have issues to where we hoard a lot of clothing. Mm -hmm. We hoard a lot of clothes at our house. I know I had that issue at one point. Shoot, I was smaller way back then, you know what I'm saying. So I had a bunch of clothes in there. And recently, <laughs> you know, I gained some weight. I didn't eat the burning fat. But recently, I just give away the, all them old clothes, right? Because mm -hmm. it's going to be a while until I'll be able to fit them anyway. I might as well just buy some <laughs> new clothes so they help my brother out. Right. So if you see your brother got a hole in his... Uh, Jacket or hole in the sock, help your brother out. If you, you hey, if he needs some new, if he needs some socks, you help him out. Lord's will, y'all buy him some brand new socks and not your used socks and give it to him, babe. But y'all see, it, hey, <laughs> Lord's will. All right, read that again. Luke chapter three verse eleven. Mm -hmm. He answered and said unto them, He that had two coats, let him impart to him that had none. Hey, hey, pull up that word impart real quick. Pull up that word in part. Because, you know, that's that's something that, you know, a word that we don't really use. In part. In part. Uh, where am I? Number one. Okay, to, number one. To give. To give. Mm -hmm. Convey. Mm -hmm. Or grant from or as if from a store. So pretty much in part means to give, right? So provide. Helping your brother to what they need, all right? So go to Deuteronomy chapter 15, verse 7. Deuteronomy chapter 15, verse 7. So look, y'all. A lot of us, we have things that we need to get rid of. A lot of us are just being hoarders. Right. We really are hoarders, a lot of us. So understand that there's people that's in need. You know, people that's uh, overseas, we try to uh, help them out. Uh, certain schools are being able to do that. So if you're able to help your brother and your sister out, do it. Get rid of that old stuff that you don't need. 
Get rid of it. Deuteronomy chapter 15, verse 7. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 15, verse 7. Mm -hmm. If there be among you a poor man of one of thy brethren within any of thy gates in thy land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not harden thine heart. Nor shut thine hand from thy poor brother. So understand that we're not supposed to harden our heart. We're not supposed to be uh, put that in our mind to where I don't want to help this brother out. This person always asking for help, right? We're not supposed to harden our heart to that. Read. Verse 8. But thou shalt open thine hand wide unto him. Thou shalt open thy hand wide unto them. Open wide. Whatever they need, help them out. Give it to them. That's what the scriptures say. Read that again. But thou shalt open thine hand wide unto him, and shalt surely lend him sufficient for his need. For his need. Give them what they need. If you know they need something, help them out. Read. In that which he wanted. Right. So go to uh, Leviticus chapter 23, verse 14 real quick. Leviticus chapter 23, verse 14. So we're going to go into the Dylan's part. So y'all understand that providing... This is something that we were supposed to do. This is part of keeping that second greatest commandment by loving our brother and our neighbor, right? Loving our brother and our sister. That's part of it. So we're going back to these old these laws so you'll know what you got to do to the next day, uh, next week, right. next month or two. When that person that you know that need help, help them out. Mm -hmm. They're going to covetousness. Mm -hmm. covetousness too. Right, right, right. Go to Leviticus chapter 23, verse 14. The book of Leviticus, chapter 23, verse 14. And ye shall eat neither bread, nor parched corn, nor green ears, until the selfsame day. Whoops. They... My bad. Go to Leviticus, chapter 25, verse 14. Gotcha. Man, 25, 14? Yep. Nice. The book of Leviticus. Scribble, scribbled and all that. Can't even know what I put. All right, go ahead. Okay. The book of Leviticus, chapter 25, verse 14. And if thou sell aught unto thy neighbor. So if I want to sell something to a soldier right here, read. Or buyest aught of thy neighbor's hand. If I want to buy something from him, read. Ye shall not oppress one another. We should not oppress one another? Mm. So, so some people might think, you know, like, what the hell is this talking about? I'm buying and selling from him or whatever. But it says we shouldn't oppress our neighbor. We are already getting oppressed from all these other nations already. So if you think about it, bro, hey, hey I know uh, when y'all go into the store, right, you see bread. You know bread is already however much dollars. Say if it's $2, right? Right. And you go into the store and you see that thing been raised up to $2.50 or $3. You be like, what the hell? Right. You be pissed off. <laughs> you already being oppressed enough. So why, why would you want to impress your own brother? You're not supposed to do that. Don't overcharge them something that you already know. It, don't even, it ain't even worth that. We ain't not supposed to oppress our own neighbor. Read. Read that again. And if thou sell aught unto thy neighbor, or buyest aught of thy neighbor's hand, ye shall not oppress one another. Ye shall not oppress one another. So go to uh, Leviticus chapter 19, verse 11. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 11. Leviticus 19, verse 11. Ye shall not steal, neither deal falsely, Neither lie one to another. Neither deal falsely. Don't deal falsely with your brother when you, especially with the buying or selling. And you know that brother's trying to help you. Why deal falsely with him? They providing you their own service and you want to deal falsely with them. Right? Read that again. Ye shall not steal. Neither deal falsely. Neither lie one to another. And all you business people, y'all probably thinking like, damn, this, I, I understand what the officer is saying, right? Because they understand that the, uh, your own neighbor has done this to you. But if you, you've done that to your own neighbor, repent from it. Don't oppress your own brother or your own sister. Go to uh, Proverbs chapter 28, verse 8. The book of Proverbs chapter 28, verse 8. He, he that by usury and unjust gain increaseth his substance, he shall gather it. For him that will pity the, the poor. Hey, look up usury for me uh, real quick. I don't know if I sent y'all a link for usury. If you could, pull up usury for me. It says, uh, verse 8, He that by usury and unjust gain increaseth his substance. Usury. 
the lending of money with an interest charge for its use, especially the lending of money at exempt. That's all right. right. Don't, don't even worry about it. <laughs> high high, high it. interest rates. <laughs> right. <laughs> hey, the lending of money with interest charged for its use. Exorbitant. Yeah. Read that verse again. <laughs> the book of Proverbs, chapter 28, verse 8. eight. He that by usury and interest, un- he that by interest, which is usury, read. And unjust gain. You unjust gain. You, you, you gaining money by, by dealing falsely. Read. Increase it his substance. Yeah, of course you're gonna increase your substance, but after a while, all that all that that money that you're getting, you're getting it from wickedness. Right? Read. Finish verse A out. He he shall all gather. Right. He shall gather it for him that will pity the poor. Mm-hmm. Go to uh Leviticus chapter 19, verse 11 again. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 11. So look. We're not supposed to be. We're not supposed to deal. Uh, have a charge usury to our neighbor. All right. We're not supposed to charge interest on our neighbor. Leviticus chapter nineteen, verse eleven again. The book of Leviticus chapter nineteen, verse eleven. Mm-hmm. Ye shall not steal, neither deal falsely, neither lie one to another. All right. Go to Second uh, Kings chapter twenty-two, verse three, real quick. Second Kings chapter twenty-two, verse three. The hold, book on, of, hold on, hold on, let me get there. 22 verse 3. Yeah, 22 verse 3. We'll read down all the way to 7. All right, go ahead. So this is, uh, right here, this is talking about when uh, Josiah was repairing the temple, okay? So go ahead. The book of 2 Kings, chapter 22, verse 3. And so it, look, this this example that I'm pulling, this is what we should all be able to be able to want if we want to uh, be able to deal with our brother. So if I uh say if I want to have to come over his go over his house and fix something for him, right? Mm-hmm. This is an example that I should be able to want to be able to us to have with each other, right? So read this right here. Second Kings chapter 22, verse 3. Mm-hmm. And it came to pass in the 18th year of King Josiah that the king sent Shaphan, the son of Azaliah, Azaliah the son of Mes- Meshalam, mm-hmm. the scribe, to the house of the Lord, saying, Go up to Hil- Hilkiah, Hilkiah yep. the high priest, that he may sum the silver which is brought into the house of the Lord, which the keepers of the door have gathered of the people. For the, uh, the work that they do, right? Read. That have the oversight of the house of the Lord. The temple, read. And let them give it to the doers of the work which is in the house of the Lord. To do what? To repair the breaches of the house uh-huh. unto carpenters uh-huh. and builders mm-hmm. and masons mm-hmm. and to buy timber mm-hmm. and hewn stone to repair the house. Mm-hmm. Howbeit, there was no reckoning made with them of the money that was delivered into their hand because they dealt faithfully. Hey, IT, pull up that word reckoning real quick. Pull up that word reckoning real quick. Reckoning. Reckoning. The act or an instant of rec- reckoning such as... Account. Account. Bill. Let's go down Go down a little bit for me. Look at the synonyms. I think they had some synonyms on there. Uh, appraisal, right? Or estimate or evaluation, evaluation, right? So read that verse 7 again. Verse 7. How be it? There was no reckoning made with was, them. There was no evaluation, no estimate made with these brothers, right? So you might ask yourself, why was there no estimate made, right? If this brother is doing work for me, he don't even have to tell me the estimate, right? Because why? Because I'm going to deal right with my brother. I'm not going to deal falsely with him, read. How be it? There was no reckoning made with them of the money that was delivered into their hand because they dealt faithfully. Because they what? They dealt faithfully. Man, come on now, man. We dealt faithfully with each other. I ain't got to worry about how much this is going to cost. I'm going to take care of you. Mm. right? I'm going I'm to give you more than what you need probably. That's how we mm. dealt with each other. Go to uh, Proverbs chapter 16, verse 8. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 8. 
The book of Proverbs, chapter 16, verse 8. Better is a little with righteousness than great revenues without right. Read that again. Let me get there again. My bad. Yes, sir. My bad, y'all. Read that again for me. The book of Proverbs, chapter 16, verse 8. Better is a little with righteousness than great revenues without right. Hey, you know how uh, a lot of us, you know, some of us, we have cars, right? We want to sell it amongst our brother. And uh, we usually talk, we like, man... I charge you fifteen hundred, whatever. You know what I'm saying? You can get two thousand or twenty five hundred for the car, right? But you charge your brother fifteen hundred. It says better is a little with righteousness, and it says than great revenues without right. Hey man, we gotta stop dealing false with each other, and we can't be busting each other's heads. Right. We got to bust Esau head up. That's we gonna, right. We overcharge them. You overcharge them usury. You overcharge them interest. That's what you do, right? Go to uh, Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 20. So understand that this is providing and dealing. This is how we deal with one another. This is how we provide with each other. We have to know these things so well, in the future when these things come up, come about, we'll be able to know how to do it, right? Proverbs, I mean, Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 20. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 20. Mm -hmm. Unto a stranger. Thou mayest lend upon usury. So earlier I told y'all we can't lend usury to our neighbor. But this verse says what? Read it again. Unto a stranger thou mayest lend upon usury. Uh-huh. But unto thy brother. Ooh-wee. But unto thy what? Thy brother mm -hmm. thou shalt not lend upon usury. Man, read it. Read. That the Lord thy God may bless thee in all that thou settest thine hand to in the land whither thou goest to possess it. Hey, you bust he Esau head up. You bust all these other nations' heads up. You you charge them they had, they had some interest <laughs> for real. The strength. Right. You charge them interest for real. Don't charge your brother uh usury. Don't charge them interest. Don't do that. Go to uh Psalm chapter 37, verse 21. So understand that of course Dylan's, you know, is dealing with uh, money wise, buying and selling things like that, but I also want to uh, touch on one more quick point as well. Psalms chapter 37, verse 21. The book of Psalms, chapter 37, verse 21. Mm -hmm. The wicked borrow it and pay it not again, but the righteous show it mercy and give it. Man, read that first part again. Psalms chapter 37, verse 21. Right? The wicked borrow it and pay it not again. So if I borrow. Let's say I borrow, mm, give me something. If I borrow, I borrow, no, I don't want to use money. I want to okay. use something else. I want to use something else. Because, you know, we got to order, like, brothers can't ask for money from other brothers, right? Right. 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 Um, oh, think, give me something. Give me something. I got you. You borrow my. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, car. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I, I, right, 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 right. Even though that's, that's, that's too big, too, though. You borrow my lawnmower. I borrow, yeah, your lawnmower. Good, good one right here, right? Read that verse again. The wicked borrow it. And pay it not again. So if I borrow your lawnmower, right? I'm using that lawnmower for about a few months now, right? Making money with it. Making money, right? <laughs> <laughs> Making money with it, right? <laughs> I ain't change, I ain't put no, you know, change it out. No, do, do, do no maintenance on it, right? Right. And then I don't want to give it back to him. Ooh wee. Read it again. The wicked borrow it and pay it not again. And then what if I just break your lawnmower? I'm breaking it, just give it back to you. Like, oh man, I don't know what happened. Uh, I don't know why it's broken. You must have broke. It. I guess it happened uh, when I gave it to you or something, right? But look, read that again, man. Read it again. The wicked borrow it and pay it not again. Ooh wee, the wicked don't pay it again. So understand that if you if you this person, fix it, fix it. Re <laughs> hey, read that again, man. Hey, hey, hey. The wicked borrow it. And pay it not again, but the righteous show it mercy and give it. But the righteous show it mercy and give it. So I want y'all to understand something too that uh, dealings, you know, sometimes, uh, like for, for example, uh, Hezekiah and Jedediah, right? They help a lot of brothers in need dealing with their cars, things like that, right? Mm -hmm. They help them out. They don't charge, sometimes they don't even charge anything to no brother. They want to do it for charity, right? True. Right, but understand that so also you help them out. If you have the, if you have, you're, you're able to help them out, 
help them out. So, for example, say if they drove an hour or two away to come help you fix your car, pitch them some gas money, right? Pitch them some money for food just for taking care of them, right? Even if they don't accept your money, just help them out. Feed them. That's how we're supposed to deal with each other. If somebody's doing some services for you, you able to help them out? Do it. Do it. Go to uh, read that again, verse 21. Psalms chapter 37, verse 21. Mm -hmm. The wicked borrow it and pay it not again, but the righteous show it mercy the and give it. The righteous show of mercy and give it. So I'm going to give to my brother. I'm going to help him out just for the service that he's doing for me. And, of course, we understand that sometimes people are not able to give, and they understand that too. But are you able to help them out? Right. That's what you need to examine about yourself. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 27. <clears throat> the book of Proverbs chapter 3, verse 27. Mm -hmm. Withhold not good from them to whom it is due. Ooh Read. When it is in the power of thine hand to do it. So sometimes, I know uh, we use the scriptures when we want to give credit to people. We want to acknowledge them, right? But read that again. Withhold not good from them to whom it is due. So you know that person did good to you. Help them out. Help them when they need it the most. Help them out. Be there for them. Because I know back in the world, we want to, uh, you know, back in the world, we, uh, when we help people out and they ain't do nothing for you, you be like, man, I don't want to help that brother out because right. you, you're doing everything. They, they only call you when they want something, right? They only call you when they need something. But you're not supposed right. to be like that. You're supposed to be able to be there for your brother and help them out, especially when you got it. Read that again. Withhold not good from them to whom it is due, when it is in the power of thine hand to do it. When it is in thy power in thy hand to do it. So if you got that power to do it, do it. So understand that these, I had touched on a little bit pretty much of providing and dealings, how to deal with your brother and your sister. Especially when you show love towards them, all right? So understand that providing when you help your brother that's in need because we always going to have the poor with us. And dealing, that's how you know how we deal with each other, dealing with business. Because a lot, a lot of times we think worldly, you know, we always, how he was grazed up. Like, oh, I'm going to buy and sell this, you know, thinking worldly, how we deal with each other, like charging interest, things like that. But when you come into this truth, there's laws set in place on how you deal with everything, especially with the buying and selling and charging interest to your brother. And helping them, especially when they need it the most. All right? So I'll praise to the most high. Anybody got any questions? We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth. <laughs>